28-year-old Brazilian guitarist Mateus Assato is one of the greatest and most influential guitarists on the scene today. Every great guitar player I know loves Mateus's playing. In fact, John Mayer said this about him back in 2020. That's why I watch Instagram all the time. I love watching people play. Mateus Sato was here, he's playing his ass off. He's one of the best guitar players around. Then his stage is is Instagram, you know? I mean, he plays his own music and he plays in Tori Kelly's band, but where I found him, he sold one of the guitars he plays to me. I bought it, because I watched him play it. It, it, that power is still there. The power of watching another guitar player and going, oh, shit. Over the course of about six years, Mateus amassed over one million followers on Instagram. In fact, he kind of invented how the guitar is used on Instagram. He would actually create these one-minute pieces. And then in February of 2021, without any warning, took his Instagram channel down. It was just gone. And my friends started calling me, did you see Mateus took his channel down? I said, what? I went and looked for it. It wasn't there. This, of course, sparked a huge amount of interest and speculation in the online guitar community as to why this happened. To that, Mateus put out this statement. Hi, hope you're all well and safe. What I'm about to share is a confession of something I would never expect to happen that early in my life. I haven't played guitar for three weeks. I honestly don't remember staying away from my main source of creation for so long. This feels very weird because I don't even feel the excitement of grabbing my guitar to enjoy the goodness and blessings that music creates on us artistically. I honestly didn't want to blame it on the pandemic, but I got to a point where my inspiration simply disappeared. Now, I never spoke to Mateus until about two days after he took his Instagram down, and since then we've become good friends. After a year of being off Instagram, out of the blue, Mateus put his channel back up and then performed with Bruno Mars and Silk Sonic at the Grammys. This is just a couple weeks ago. Today I have the pleasure of having Mateus here in the studio to talk about all that's transpired over these last few years. Don't forget to subscribe. 58% of you that are watching this are not subscribed to the channel. I'm trying to get to 3 million. Now let's get to the interview. Welcome, Mateus. Thank you, Rick. It's a big pleasure to be here, man. And uh, as you mentioned, like our friendship starts to you know get bigger as soon as I deleted my account. <laughs> I had nothing insane. to do with it. No, that's actually like a, a big fact because I remember like as soon as I, you know, I post that thing like, hey, I'm tired, whatever. You were, you were like one of the few people that like, hey, I need to talk to you. So you gave me your number and I think it was through YouTube. Like, no, you wrote me. You wrote me on Instagram, and then you deleted your Instagram account, and I had responded. That's okay. That's and then, you, then you wrote me on, and he was like, "Hey, I, I don't have your number anymore." <laughs> and then exactly, and then um, yeah, like a day after, or so we had like this long call, and I was like, "Oh, that's a very refresh words to me." So, Mateus, everybody was wondering what happened when you originally deleted your. Instagram account and I mean I've been watching you for years you've been doing Instagram f forever then you move from Instagram into playing with huge acts people like Tori Kelly with Bruno Mars and and you're one of the few people that really graduated from being an internet guitar player to actually being out and uh, you know playing with all these big acts don't know I'm not from the US I'm from Brazil born and raised in Brazil, then I moved to California in 2013 to study music at Musicians Institute. Yep. I have my YouTube channel since, I don't know, 2006 or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I, I, again, like, everything was just very amateur, like, you know, you know, I didn't have any, like, 
video editing skills and stuff but i like that kind of stuff since you know i was a kid even before i you know start getting music to, into music like professionally or something so i had this already like of okay i want to record myself and show this to people right you know and when instagram allowed us to post videos yeah that was like that was majestic the, for right. me because that's the only thing i was missing about it like instagram was becoming very hot i was like oh wow that's cool i wish whenever they start allowing videos i'm gonna be the first one to do it they do they, they used to do the 15 second videos 15 then they seconds. made it then they made it a minute which made it good and it was not only 15 seconds but you You didn't have the option to go to your library, to your photo library, to upload the the the, the video. Right, so you do it. On you the had camera. to like pretty much press it and yeah. record it, kind of like what Snapchat was back then. Right, right, right. So it was so <laughs> hard because I'm like, okay, now I have the videos, but now I need somebody else to just press it for me, the button. Okay, wait. So I want to ask you this because I, when I started posting on Instagram, I was yeah. like, okay, I can't fit the guitar in the shot. I can't do, you know, I didn't know how to shoot this stuff. So I'm like. So I start. I'm. I would always look at your videos, and I'd be in, in the composition of your, just how each thing looked on it. You'd always have different shots, different backgrounds, yeah. and you would shoot the whole guitar. And I thought, wow, that's the way to do it, the way Mateus is doing. So I thought, I'm <laughs> going to do it that way. You need to see the whole guitar and not have your head cut off. Yeah. Remember how people would put videos out where their yeah. heads, head would be cut off, and exactly. they just show their show their body. Uh, so was that a? This was kind of just a development of it was of the art of actually sh how do you shoot a guitar? Yeah, how to shoot guitar playing? Yeah, that that was pretty much based off a lot of trying. The more I was just making videos, I kind of create this different perspective of like you know what? It's nice to show the face too, you know, because yeah. people needs to, you know, the, to identify like oh, it's not only a, like a random guitar player. Two weeks ago, I mentioned about this Canon Rock instrumental video. Uh -huh. That was like a legendary, right? Like everybody, it was probably one of the very first YouTube guitar videos. And uh, the guy was wearing a hat, but we couldn't see his face very much. You know what I mean? And then I was like, just associate associating things like that. to now I'm like, you know, imagine if. One of video, one like a video of mine gets like viral or something. I don't know. It's like there's no formula, right? Of like, okay, how can we make a banger? I don't know. Right. I mean, maybe there is some structures like, yeah, gotta got a good hook, thing like that. But I'll, I'll tell you this: uh, since I started playing guitar, I understood one thing. Guitar, I mean, is a voice, but it's not gonna be a actual voice voice you know like right. a vocalist so i understood my place i was like okay unfortunately i cannot sing right maybe i could sing in tune but it's not a commercial voice so forget about it right so the source i have is this i have right. a guitar so how can i become something that people okay i play one three notes whatever people would understand, okay, this is the guy, this is Mateus. Right. So that was always like, sin since I choose, you know, to become a musician, I was like, okay, I gotta have the signature sound. And I know it's probably one of the m hardest things to get, right? right? Because, you know, like, it's so hard. Where's the signet, where's the Mateus touch? Where's the Mateus, like, flavor of it? Right. So gradually, I was just like incorporating that And that's also, I, I mean, like everything in life, it has the goods and the bads. The cliche, the cliche message, it's always to like, hey, try to find your, your path, you know what I mean? And then 2021 shows up and I'm like, okay, what am I doing now? And I remember I was in, on a plane, um, leaving my girlfriend's city to my hometown. Mm -hmm. And I realized, I'm like, dang. I'm screwed. I, I, I don't know where to go. I really don't know what else to do. So that's why I, I was pretty much not feeling inspired. I was just doing the content, not yeah. music. Right. But it is content, but it came from an, like a, a good place. Yeah. When I made my Instagram pieces, it was pretty much like 
music. It was. It felt natural. It felt very like a, a, the essence of the creativity. You know yeah. what I mean? And then I got in a point that I'm like, what am I doing? My creativity was pretty much boxed. I couldn't feel inspired to you know grab a guitar and be like, wow, this is good. You know, I felt like a regular job, and I. It got in a point that pretty much I was like no resources no energy so i shut down because instagram did was you very... just all of a sudden one day say i'm taking my instagram down yeah that was in the middle of the flight i'm like okay this is being because toxic it, to me the when it disappeared everybody was like all of a sudden everybody's calling each other everybody's like did you see mateus <laughs> take his instagram down yeah no one knew what happened it was a very impulsive decision too my manager yeah. got really mad at me I was like yeah. what are you doing yeah you were the first person that really like hey what's up that's how, why i <laughs> called you like my therapist rick's the best therapist ever you have no idea and i was like in a big time struggle and i'm like and then but that's that's why it's so important to have good friends. Yes. Because you just brought. I mean, you have the experience, you have the maturity of like, chill out, kid. You know, it's gonna be fine. But then you showed up and you just sh start showing all these different perspectives of like, okay, take the break. It's important to take the break. Yeah. But just like, don't let you down. Like, because I was really like, even though it was a very impulsive decision of me saying goodbye to Instagram temporarily I was actually not feeling it. don't want to see any guitars don't want to listen to music I remember you sent me a, you sent me something you uh, a piece you playing acoustic guitar yeah it was the first time that you had played the first time in yeah. in three months or so yeah you know what I, I, I remember what happened so when I um, when I shut down my Instagram I was already not playing guitar yeah so when uh, I think the last time I played guitar was in December 2020. Yeah. So in 2021, I was not. I did not touch my guitar at all. And and then it, that's I I think I sh I decided to delete my account in February. So I was already dealing with that. Right. You know. So everything was already like ugh, it's not good. You know. So. And I think I got the first, when I got to play my guitar again, was in March. And you, Rick's a big responsible, you were very responsible for that. I have like an immense gratitude for you, man. Because of all the words you said and like the different perspective. You really, you really brought so much brightness to me. I, I and you. I have like a huge respect, a big admiration for every, every word you mention about it. And the good thing is just like, it felt like a, a, you were just being like a father. You were just like, hey, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and because I was really stressed out and I, I uh, it's hard for me as an introvert to like expose myself, you know, the way I did. So that's why I was like, ugh, I got it. But it was so important to have that break. So, Mateus, then you all of a sudden reappeared. Yeah. On Instagram. I mean, you were started posting in different places. You started yeah. posting on Twitter. Exactly. And you were posting on TikTok and everything. But, but everybody's like, okay, is Mateus ever going to come back to Instagram? And then. Yeah. Because Instagram was like the, 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 the thing that was scared most. Right. Because again, I had and the was, and there was your and then there was kind of the fake Mateus site that your fan page that somebody had put up, right? Yeah, my that was also a thing. Shout out to them; they're really nice guys. So they still wanted to keep up, you know. Because uh, again, like people were like, "Hey, where is this guy?" Yeah, and they decided to keep the content and stuff. So for me, the struggle was m more directly with Instagram. Yeah. Because that's where air, like most people knew me from. Yes. What's the first things that you learned on guitar? Mm -hmm. So my biggest and first real influence on guitar was uh, this guy from uh, this band called Oficina G3. Uh, uh, his name is Juninho Fan. He's also like a good friend of mine. I would say he's my mentor. And he's like a... He's a mix of like Nuno, Bittencourt, and... Uh, John Sykes, okay, kind of thing. So, 
I didn't know these guys yet. Right. I, my only reference was just this Brazilian rock band. So, yeah, I would say that I started, uh, like... Would you start learning solos off, yeah, off rock, his records and things? Yeah, it was like his, his stuff, pretty much. Biggest influences came from Brazil during my first three years of guitar. And then I got knowing a little bit more of, like, the, the big names. So... Steve Vai and Satriani. Satriani was probably like the first like American guy that I was like, oh man. And I I remember like listen like I think the first instrumental song I learned was that was that the, the always with you always with uh -huh. me like that's like one of my favorites. <laughs> It's just like very melodic. I, I I was very melodic, maybe because, uh, you know, I grew up in church, so melody was a, a must, and like, so yeah. So I started listening to the Brazilian players. Then I, you know, by watching. would you learn things like Nuno's solos or anything like that? Would you learn? Would you, did you no. start to learn? I'm the any, worst at playing. Would like, you learn any solos ever? No. No solos. Uh, that was something that actually frustrated me back in the days. Because mm -hmm. when I started, I was nine. The internet in Brazil was still like something new. So right. we didn't have like YouTube and like Guitar Pro. So we didn't have like the good transcriptions. Yeah. So everything was still like by, by the year. Okay? So that's all that's good. Because like, people always say, oh, this guy already had Guitar Hero. No, I didn't learn guitar. <laughs> I didn't want to become a guitar player because of Guitar Hero. I was already um, an amateur guitar player. That's but good. Anyway, so um, everything was just by ear, and I didn't have the talent. Because that's also a thing. It is a talent, man, to learn things by ear. And Absolutely. to me, I, I never got it. Never. So what... What what it was for me, I always like get the point, some points, some yeah. highlights, but yeah. never like, ooh. And then you make it your own. Exactly. Now wait, when you went to to Musicians Institute, who did you study with there? Uh, I had like Dan Gilbert, uh, Alan Hines, uh, Carvin Hines. Mm -hmm. What else? I have oh, I have this teacher that changed my whole freaking life. Uh, Dale Turner. Mm -hmm. He had this la this class named Jimi Hendrix Rhythm Guitar. Okay, and that changed the whole thing. <laughs> well, what's the kind of stuff you learned in that, Matthias? So it was more like so. I remember like the main lessons was just like get, grabbing a chord progression, like a regular like C major, G A minor, F. <laughs> In, in a very like Jimi Hendrix rhythm kind of thing. more like they see Mateus can actually just sit here and play like that no, that's not a trash but, <laughs> <laughs> God, no. but you know like so that was like like the main uh, intention of the the last the, the classes was just like how to incorporate feels fills double stops and things in like between that between You're right in chords. between the chords yeah and that was like oh I love it because he was just showing me like because at, at first, when I, you know, heard Jimi Hendrix and John Mayer or Steve Ray, you know, I would say, like, that's like the, the like the, you know, the, the legacy of Jimi Hendrix, right? Um, I didn't know, like, what is that called, you know? Because I'm not, like, a good, uh, good in, in terms. I don't know how to explain what I play, you know? I'm a bad teacher. Totally the opposite <laughs> of you. But, so to me, I was like, what is that? And then, thankfully, I had this class that I was like, okay, so it's called. So, what would he have you practice then? He would just say. So it, it was more like you have like they the, he would set a, a metronome. Yep. And then at first you just play the chords, mm. uh, like you know, like. and then little by little you. 
career just incorporate try to find different uh, options of field fields you know yeah and then he was just showing me showing us uh, um, like options like oh you could do like you know and then that's like very theoretical he was just showing like oh you could use like the C major scale or <laughs> And this is when I found out what a double stop is. Mm -hmm. So he was just like... So that was like, okay, it, it changed the whole game to me. I was like, okay, that's what a double stop is. And then what I did from that, that class until nowadays, I was like, okay, now everything I'm going to try to play, I'm going to play in double, double notes, you know what I mean? So, Mateus, you incorporate some insane single note lines that are just like one of your last posts that you put up. Yeah, that was actually a I good mean, one. I mean, insane single line stuff. Yeah. So where does that come from? Where, do you, where did you develop? That came from that lesson until seeing Tori Kelly's keyboard player. Okay. But he was using a different code. Because he had, so I saw just by the, the listening of it, it was so amazing. So, uh, to or, Tori Kelly's ex keyboard player, his name is Le Leonard Jarman, plays for a lot of good. Uh, he's playing now with Maverick City, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, uh, he is um, probably the most talented musician I've I've played, and then he's like insane like perfect pitch all this crazy stuff that you're already familiar with um and then he was just soloing using the moog but with uh like um a paddle what's the that paddle the harmonizer paddle harmonizer yeah like yeah. a, a digitech or something yeah. and then I, I freaked out i was like man this sounds phenomenal like are you using like the hands like the different finger positions and then he was like no it's a paddle but then that kind of triggered my mind of like, man, I want to sound like this guy. Right. So this is when I was like, because when, okay, back in the days, I was pretty bad at alternate picking. Yeah. And what my teacher back in the days, back in uh, my uh, my hometown said, I was like, hey, if you don't know how to alternate picking, what you're going to do is every note you play in your guitar, you're going to alternate. Like use the alternate picking for everything. Right. So I kind of incorporate that mentality into like the double stop thing for that season. I was like, okay, how can I make a like a like a monophonic pentatonic okay. to sound polyphonic, like right. I mean, with two sounds, you know? So it would be I don't know. This is actually it's actually not very accurate, but like. <laughs> So it's like, but that came from listening the the keyboard player, and that was like mind blowing to me. It sounded very nice, and again, it's for me. It's all about like giving a different flavor. Because again, what else could we explore at the guitar? Right. Especially after seeing Guthrie Govan <laughs> changing the whole thing, you know. So that for me, I was like. Okay, maybe I should just play that kind of stuff. And thankful and that's a good point of double stops because it's like it could incorporate into your soloing but mainly for like counting. Yeah. You could add that as like and this is when you see like John John Mayer, Frusciante or you know, Jimi Hendrix back in the days, the yeah. music and stuff. It's just like beautiful. Maybe it's not the most precise, you know, and that's something that, you know, I'm not very good at it, keeping like the rhythm very consistent, but it kind of gives like a different flavor. It's kind of like a vocalist, like it's nice when the vocalists mess mess around with the rhythm. Right? Right. I, I, I mean, I like that, right. you know, playing a little bit behind the beat or whatever. So when you incorporate the double stops, you could have that too. So so let's 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 see something, Mateus. Come on. Oh man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's let's try. So I was playing this, and that's like a, a spoiler of Silk Sonic's show. Um, so I have this little interlude um, where, like, um, I played this. Um, what's the name of the song? The Willy Wonka song. The Thank mm -hmm. you. 
<laughs> I'm so nervous right now, man. <laughs> but yeah, so that stuff is so hard to play accurately, and you you just do it so well. Oh, I mean, it's really hard to play yeah. those kind of lines like that. Having um, but Mateus, small when, hands help. When you do bit. those ripping single note lines, though, too, I mean, you do some insane ripping single note things all over the place, though. Uh, that that and that comes from my actual music background. Right. So this guitar player, Brazilian guitar player Juninho, from, he's like a massive shredder. Like he's like uh, very like. Let's see if I can play this now. It's very like Paul Gilbert, Nuno. So he's very like. But yeah, so it's just like, I, I remember like just listening to him playing that kind of stuff. Like he was very, very like Paul Gilbert Nuno. Okay, wait, so are you economy picking any of that stuff? Or are you all picking all of it? I am, because I'm nervous now. Like when I when I like really like playing, I try to just go like crazy, alternate picking and everything. But I mean, when I when I like cheat, I just just use the alternate picking because that's something I learned from like listening to Brad Paisley and like guys like that. But um, okay, so wait, well, give me something that you're practicing. What are you working on right now? Um, well, because here's the thing: like the double stop thing is nice, but if you don't practice that thing, it's gonna suck. Yeah. Because you you have to. It's hard to play it well, with fluidity. It right? is. It yeah. is. So and also, and I'm not trying to do like a merch about my 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 guitar or something, but this is like the favorite thing about the Sir guitars. It's yep. just like it's so easy to play. Mm -hmm. John Sir just makes like one of my favorite necks, man. Like it's just beautiful. Like and since I start playing that that those guitars in 2000. 14, that kind of contributed a lot for my, you know, style of playing too. And um, anyway, so I I play guitars that help me a lot. Like I know there are a lot of players that love to fight with the instrument. I wish I could be that guy, but unfortunately I'm not. And so for me, I gotta be like, you know, what I'm, you know, like a diva for that thing. Like <laughs> the guitar needs to be like. Very like well set up, and oh, I I hate it because like if I hey, wait, do you now you just went from tens to nines or nines to tens? Tens to nines. Tens to nines. There I'm you go. Keep like going. Nice. Lighter and lighter. Just one more <laughs> gauge, man, and you're there. Yeah. So so to me, anyway. So what I practice is I try to do a lot of like this, um, again, like the double stops, and try to. Um, you know, just keep my technique going. So it's mainly like, whenever I grab a guitar, like, okay, this is a warm up before a show, using like the runs I normally play. I I I love playing pentatonic runs. Okay. And that's something I really try to do all the time. Okay. To keep that, you know, like. That kind of stuff, I, I try to like, you know, like, because that helps a lot with, you know, me finding the right notes. I mean, if there is a right note, but like, and also with the, uh, the right hand. Yeah. Because the right hand for me is my weakest. It's hard. And, and when it comes to like, that's why I really appreciate country players because I think they're the most, I mean, country and probably metal players. They're like very equal when it comes to like right hand and left hand. Right. It's so syncopated. It's just so much. It's very like in tune. And uh, for me, I, I was my my left hand was always like better than the right hand. So that's what I try to you know because when I play the double stops, I don't care much about my right hand. It's pretty much it's all about the left. All the hand. left hand. That I always try to do too is just like to just like I don't know go for like a D major sound and there you go and 
give that. There you go. You know. You know, like, so that, I like to just, you know, use a little bit of the bending techniques and actually I need to establish more exercises of like, okay, I do this and that. It's, again, to me, it's just like, I grab the guitar and I, whatever I feel like doing, it, I just go. But for sure, nowadays, uh, the t if I would name this in topics, I would probably give the focus on, uh, um, on double stops first and probably pentatonic runs because pentatonics you know it's the law of life right uh, and the bending now because now I understood and because also like I've been playing sitting down so much right then when you when you stand up it's just a whole different okay so this is the thing that, that we were talking about yeah that's true. I was talking about one of your posts recently where you're you're playing that Les Paul, and yeah. what, what, what was that gig that you were on? Uh, it was a guest appearance in Nashville at the Ryman. That's right. That's at the right. Show with the band Camino. That's right. And I said that thing about Mateus is that he knows how to entertain an audience properly. Where you hold the guitar at the right height, you come out to the front of the stage, you play to the audience, then you come back and you you look at the drummer and yeah, yeah, it's like. This is how you do this. Yeah, man. That's, I mean, that's that's old school pro, uh, you know, rock guitar playing right there. I I always wanted to have a band, but maybe I'm not a good I'm a not a good relation guy. Maybe I I mean I don't know. Or maybe it's just like yeah, you're supposed to be. No, maybe you just haven't gotten around solo to solo guitar. Yet. No, I mean, but the reason why I'm saying is that that is just like. It was always a dream to me, so when I have an opportunity to play, to play with a band like that, I'm like, dang, I'm living like the life, you right. know? And of course, we have some lessons of like how to behave on stage back in the days in a music college, but if you don't feel it, you know, it doesn't, you, you're not gonna, I mean, there are people that get it and some don't. And I'm like, okay, this is a rock band. I mean, sorry for all the, you know, conservative rockers but i mean it's a rock band in the it's modernity rock band. yeah yeah so and there's a certain way that you entertain exactly. as, as a lead guitar player yeah you yeah. come to the front of the stage and you put on a show but you, you know like you have to it like it wouldn't make sense for me being a rock band to play with my guitar like this i mean why do you go to a show it's not to listen only music you got to feel the interaction right so to me i'm like okay Probably like 90% of this audience have no clue what I'm playing. You know, it's just like, you know, mo because, I mean, it's a rock band. Mo most of them are girls and, they, I mean, they just want to go the vocalist. I mean, sorry, it's just me being <laughs> ignorant. But, you know what I mean? So I was like, okay, I got to interact. And this is something I learned a lot from being with uh, with Bruno and the guys. I mean, the musicians, the, the hooligans. Like they, their stage presence is yes. just like contagious. Yeah, I'm like, I want to be like these guys. There you go. And also, we have this authority somehow because uh, um, I mean, without this guitar in my hands, I feel like trash. I cannot speak <laughs> with anybody like properly. Uh -huh. But then somehow, when I have a guitar in my hands and then there's a freaking stage, I just feel like, dang, I'm Superman. <laughs>
like great. that. That's great. That's cool, man. Fantastic. I like this guitar. Playing vertical for the rails. There you go. <laughs> I mean, I'll put that on Instagram. The, Let's the, go. Uh, little, uh, yes. That sounds great. Thanks, Rick. That sounds great. I apologize, all musical nerds here, for the bad notes. Great hanging. Appreciate it. Thanks, Rick. Cool. And once again, man, uh, as I told you before, I, I'm just really grateful. It's a big privilege for me to be here, finally meeting in person. And again, what you did to me during that that time was very important. And what you've been doing for the music community nowadays is so necessary. So please, like, like the same way you inspired me during that 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 phase of my life, I would love to like be your supporter for that because what do you what do you do is really important. I'm just very emotional right now because like you're just great, man. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I appreciate Thank you for it, having Mateus. Me. I appreciate my it. pleasure. All right, my friend. Thank you. Yep.